Humboldt, PG&E's plans for Humboldt were to turn it into a nuclear re uh, repository, a waste dump, basically. Wow. And, and, and some of the things I heard would make your hair stand up. <laughs> One of the things that happened shortly after I started my investigation was uh, the PG&E had decided that they were going to take the uh, containment building down. Right? Well, PG&E has a sweetheart arrangement with Humboldt County. Uh, they agreed early on to hire locals as often as they could. That's how it got populated with a lot of pretty incompetent people. <laughs> but the other thing is they contract out, uh, like Mr. Rowan said, they contract out with local uh, construction people, etc. So the plan, they announced this plan that they're going to they're going to take down the containment building. Now, you folks who know about containment buildings, this is a very very tricky operation. And the plant sits three, four miles from, from uh, Eureka. It sits about eight or nine miles from, but as a crow flies, from Humboldt State University. It's, a pretty, it's actually a pretty densely populated rural area. This contractor, I, I'm talking to some folks that still worked in the plant at the time, they were appalled because the contractor was just going to send some guys in there with jackhammers to take the plant down. It was just a you know, concrete element. Concrete and steel, they've done that before. Not a nuclear plant. <laughs> so I think that that did not last, unfortunately. But you can imagine, uh, you know, the, the, the containment building, the first six feet on the inside, heavily contaminated. Heavily contaminated. Not to mention all the piping and all the equipment and all the other things around the plant. And as Mr. Rowe pointed out, things outside the plant. A lot of contamination. This is a very, very challenging process. Is there any action that can help with the ringdown? Any groups? Do you understand this? No, no, the community doesn't. You know, PG&E is really good at its public relations. You know, uh, a, a little, little money to the local radio station and the local TV station. And, and it's like, oh, you know, well, let's celebrate PG&E. They're one of the major employers. They're an important player in that neighborhood. So they get a lot of positive press. I, I know there's a, a public radio station in, in the area that and they do a very good job, but nobody's really telling them. And that's the problem we have. People just don't know. You know, if, if they had the physician's responsibility, actually tell them. Most people tell them what the risks are. We would have a really different environment, political environment to work in. But people are not told, and it's very hard to get to people and explain these, these issues to them. It takes attention, it takes time, it takes a sophistication in communication. Yes. Except nuclear power is power. It's an enormous amount of you know, you've got a confluence of financial interests, corporate interests, political interests that come around this issue, and they're all in bed together protecting you. And that's a really tough, tough nut to crack. Did I hear you correctly that their goal presently is to turn Humboldt into a waste site? Yes. A, a, what, medical waste? Or? Well, I think they'll take any waste that they can make money from. But that's like, how close is that to the Pacific Ocean? Oh, it's right there. <laughs> it's right there. I mean, you can practically <laughs> surf there. It's not going to happen in their lifetime. That's, that, they believe this. Yeah, this <laughs> if bad things happen, it's not going to happen in my lifetime. But they've actually said this publicly, we're going to turn it into a... I believe that this is known in the area. I certainly heard that from a lot of people who I talked to, including Mr. Uh, Easley, who sat in on the highest levels of management of pg and &E up until he was fired in 2010. That was the plan. That's why he was brought in to, to be the officer in charge of decommissioning so they could convert the plant into a storage facility. And these are the people, when I was at the Cron, we I broke a story about how they lost a nuclear fuel rod. Yeah, and they never right. found it. They, right, they, right, to right, this well, day, they don't know where it is. They these don't are the know, people they don't they don't, no, no, but at worst, you know, as, as they pointed out to me, I, I went up and visited I like to do site visits, I like to know what I'm dealing with. 
Uh, so he's kind of walking around the area, not in the plant, obviously. But he pointed out there's a very popular trail that's not far from the plant. A lot of people like to go, you know, out for a jog or out for a walk, and it's a beautiful area to do that. The weather's good. Uh, and so he, he would go down this path. And he said, "You know what's over there, about a hundred yards? That's one of the dry fuel." He said, hundred yards. hundred yards. Do people know that? Is there a sign? No. Uh, so every day people are going by completely oblivious. Are, are there armed guards? Armed guards or anything to make sure that. I mean, that'd be a juicy target for ISIS. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you really, we, we do this, this job. And, you know, I've done this, I did this job for five years. And I learned, among other things, that the railroads, you know, leave the trains running. Or the crews go off for lunch. Leave the keys in the ignition, literally. You know, and they've got, you know, they've got LPG tanks, and they've got all sorts of things. Sitting on a track, the train is running, they got no the Sorry. It's too, too, too much work to turn it on, turn it off. So we'll just leave it running. Right. Two, the only two man crew is one person crew. Right, right. So, I mean, you know, this, this is the mentality. You know, this whole business about, about security, I, I really, you know, after I look at this stuff, <laughs> some of the cases I handle were appalling. And as bad as the, the PG&E and the, actually Sony wasn't really bad, but as bad as these cases are, I've had worse cases involving much more serious risks the public, they got the same treatment. So I have to really raise the questions. Is this just a ruse? You know, we keep people distracted. Worry about the I ISIS in, in the Middle East when you've got <laughs> hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Americans at risk from preventable accidents. How many people die on the highways because the trucks are properly maintained and you've got truckers driving over hours? And by the way, they're carrying the munitions through the neighborhood. You know? It's all about appearances. That's the sad part.